Alright guys, I got another tutorial for you that uh, relates to sound. Um, we're going to add other game sound effects that you hear from things either falling or steps. In this tutorial, we're doing steps, ETC. I'll, I'll just explain some of it and the other stuff we'll just, uh, we'll just do. So I've got my step sound here, which I have used uh, from... The other project I'm working on that you guys haven't really seen at all. I just stole it from there. Put in my, uh... Oh, this isn't music, actually. We should probably make a new folder. Uh, sound effects. Why not? So now we have our step sound. And this one we're going to do uh, a little differently. We'll, uh, we'll do it for the player and for the AI, actually. No... I think we'll just do it for the AI. We'll do it for a, no, we'll do it for a player. Why not? So we're gonna use our movement script since it's directly, directly. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. Directly relates to our uh, step sound. And on the player, we'll put an audio source. Go away. Close that, I guess. Audio source. And then for this one, we want the step sound. And what's going to be? Uh, we'll, we'll disable this because we don't want this. Um, what's going to be different with this one is we are going to use 3D spatial sound, and we're going to use a linear linear roll off. And if you think of this in game units, uh that's probably about 10 units away. You want to be able to hear the step for maybe like 16 to 18. We'll, we'll do 18. And we want it to be full volume until like 4, maybe. I'll be completely fine. And then I'm pretty sure this sound is pretty quiet, so we'll leave it at uh, full volume. And we want to disable play on awake. Now, notice our movement script. That we're going to be using is on the same object which is the parent object of everything that has to do with the player and the like the audio source and the movement script is on the same thing so therefore when we go into our movement script uh, we'll be using function we'll use fixed update because that's where all this stuff is so we're gonna make a couple uh, variables Sound effects, just our step sound, just so we can uh, so we can differentiate it from everything else. Public float step timer, and by default, our step timer will be equal to. Maybe I shouldn't set it in here. We'll set it outside of uh, Unity or not outside of Unity, outside of the script, in the editor. And then public, ooh, audio clip. We won't use audio. Wait, does that say reader? Audio source. You know what, we're not even going to make a variable for it. I'm not worried about it. We'll just say public float set step timer and this is what it'll reset to. So this one will go down constantly like whenever we're moving. Since these won't run at the same time, do not I wouldn't put it on these. But We'll say if in or no step timer minus equals one times time dot delta time delta t time whoops delta time and then we'll copy this just to speed things up. Click at the end of here, press enter, paste paste. 
Now, we'll do it differently for these, because I guess we should add it to this, actually. If not input dot get key uh, we'll say W because if you're getting W and shift you're gonna sprint if you're only getting shift you're not gonna sprint so or not input or we'll say and and not input dot get key s because that's what we use to move backwards then we'll remove from the step timer so we won't do both at the same time or else it'll go down by two a second and that's not what we want then copy that and paste it down here so at no point can you run the timer or like the you could subtract from the timer twice and in the update function we'll say if step timer is less than or equal to zero step timer plus equals um set step timer so the reason why I'm adding it to it instead of just setting it to that number is because there's a different amount of time between each frame and if you wanted to synchronize it with footsteps or something uh, let's say you have an animated character you're using this with if you just add it it should stay synced uh, yep that's about it actually and then we'll say if it's less than or equal to zero first thing we should actually do is get component audio source I think you can just do dot play and close it off like that I believe that's all you got to do since we only have one audio source and then and I don't know what you can actually set in here I've never never looked into it delay we don't want to delay okay well that's fantastic so we'll test it out I disabled the game music because that was obnoxious after listening to it in the last video so we have our steps we press play and he played right away if you notice oh I forgot about that we didn't set our uh, we didn't set then movement our step timer we'll set it to, to make this easier actually and our start we'll say step timer equals set step timer so we can only adjust this number and then this one will be set to whatever and it'll be even so set step timer we'll do like 0 0.4 I think that'll sound pretty good so you notice no step yet and then we press W that's too often so all we have to do is change it to maybe like 0.6 And that's not too bad. We press shift. And there's an issue. We press shift. We're moving faster. I forgot about that. So we can do times 1.5. And then that would bring it from 6 seconds down to 4 seconds. Times 1.5. We're actually moving 2 point times faster. But we'll just do 1.5. No, we'll do 2.5 and then we'll slow it down a little bit more. Whoops. Slow it down just a teeny bit more. So we'll set it to like. I keep losing it. We'll set it to like 0.75. And then maybe it'll sound alright. So nothing. And then we sprint. 
and that sounds about right. So, uh, we're also, I guess I, we can add it to uh, the AI as well. He's constantly moving, so we could use our method of just playing on awake and looping. That wouldn't sound very good, though. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to bother, and here's why. He's constantly moving, so he's constantly moving, and there's no way to get the sound to stop playing really tested out. But if you see we move, if we don't move, it stops playing. If we press forward and left, it still plays at the same rate. If we just press left, it still plays. Back and left, it still plays. Perfect rate, that's really all there is to it. If you wanted to do it with like an object dropping and hitting the ground, in fact, actually we should do that. So the bouncing sphere, right? So we got a script for that. We'll add an audio source to it. Audio source. And we'll do the same step sound, right? And we'll do the same settings as well. So we want 3D spatial sound, linear roll off, and we'll do 25 on this one because he's, if you think about it, he, he's hitting the ground pretty hard, the, the little sphere. And in the script for the sphere on collision enter, so when he collides, we want to play the sound. It's the same thing. Get component audio source dot play and it's that simple you see how quick that was and it's not set the loop or anything which is what we want so we walk in the trigger every time it hits the ground it plays a sound Look at that. It, it even uh, plays a sound when it hits us. Now later on in a different tutorial I might show you like if we have different ground textures or whatever like when we walk on wood or if we walk on uh, I don't know, let's say this is concrete. If we walk on concrete or wood it play a different sound. It's actually pretty easy to do and we will do that with ray casting. But yep that's all I got for you for now. See you guys in the next video.